Hey guys, uh, Jeff back again. Uh, just gonna shoot a second video tonight. So, just been uh, incredibly busy of late because uh, wife and kid are finally getting back here from Japan, at least for a few months. Yeah, freaking green cards are a mess right now. Um, so yeah, I haven't had a lot of time last two weeks or so to listen to music, much less shoot vids. Um, I think I did a short one last week. But, uh, yeah, so I did uh, contest entries for uh, Steve Carlson, um, so well-deserved a thousand, uh, one of my favorite channels. So, uh, Steve, that video's up if you missed it, and just jumping in. So these are some things I've listened to over the last uh, couple weeks or so. Some of these I've shown before, I believe. Uh, yeah, maybe get some more attention because they're pretty awesome. Here we got uh, the Rainbow Goblins. Uh, this is a musical adaptation of the uh, children's book. I vaguely remember it as a kid. Uh, I might have to be picking this up for uh, my kiddo at some point. Um, this is Masayoshi Tanaka, a Japanese guitarist. Um, this is definitely in the fusion vein. And other people show this. Amazing artwork. Uh, same illustrator as the book. Maybe straight from the book for all I know. Gatefold, gorgeous artwork there, and interesting uh, record labels, they yeah. got some cats on them, and the other thing this has, it does have a full color insert, I'm missing the OB strip on this unfortunately, but this is a Japanese pressing, so Rainbow Goblin, there he is in the back, amazing album. I think those are straight out of the uh, children's book, but not positive. It's got the lyrics in English and Japanese. Um, I think all or most of it's in English on the actual album, uh, double album. So, and uh, I suspect he grabbed some English teacher or something. Yeah, it's Japan. So he probably grabbed the English teacher. They has um, like a little like passages from the book. Uh, amazing guitar work. Uh, definitely in the prog vein. If you enjoy prog, uh, this one's well worth uh, checking out. It's kind of hard to dislike this album. Just very enthusiastic and yes, Rainbow Goblins. Yeah, fun album. Uh, I did see a pretty clean copy with OB strip um, in the racks uh, in the stacks uh, for about fifteen bucks. Um, I was a little iffy on getting it, but I found this one for a buck. So. I bought it for a buck. I wish now I'd bought the better copy, but it plays pretty nicely. It's got a little snap, snap, crackle, pop. It's not bad. It's definitely listenable, but um, yeah, I'll probably be looking for an upgrade copy at some point. So Rainbow Goblins by uh, Mayoshi Tanaka. So here in a good uh, record to end the day with a uh, nice little story time. So next up. Uh, no shake on this, sorry. Allowed uh, Blake sleeves. Yeah, Japan owns most of the record shops use the Blake sleeves. So. Yep, Supremes. This, I believe this is their first album, but this is like an 80s uh, repress I picked up in Japan. Uh, I believe this is a US pressing, though. Yep, US pressing. It's on that, um, like the Rainbow Motown, I believe. Oh no, it's the, uh, yeah, this is like an 80s pressing, I think. So, yeah, 1966, yeah, real solid. Um, I kind of like the, the more disco here. I don't know, I mean, it's just what I grew up with. But, um, yeah, what do you got, Love Child and all that. But, yeah, this one, you got I, I Hear a Symphony, it's a, I Hear a Symphony, their version of Jean Melody, um, their cover of Yesterday, My World is Empty Without You, yeah. Yeah, he's always yeah. There's there's a bunch more that are pretty solid, but those are the real standout tracks on there. But um, yeah, always yeah. Supreme's always worth picking up, I suppose. Would recommend that one if you see it. Uh, I don't think they go for a lot unless you get like an early pressing. They're pretty common, I think, but I suspect they're pretty beat up in the states and in Japan. They're pretty easy to get though. Uh, this is another one inexpensive uh, pickup I got actually at a used bookstore near uh, my work. So wanted to pick up some John Abercrombie. Uh, this one's ECM with uh, 
what's the name? Towner. Ralph Towner. I think it's one of his earlier albums. But uh, this is regarded as one of uh, John Abercrombie's uh, better albums. So ECM, kind of, yeah, chill, avant garde jazz. So, yeah, so of course, um, yeah, good, they're both uh, guitarists. So kind of pastoral jazz. <laughs> ECM is very ECM, if you know ECM sound. Um, yeah, you can. I think you can usually get this for you know, in five to ten dollar range. This is a really clean copy I found. Worth picking up if you're into that. So this is uh, not one I picked up a while back. Um, original press of uh, Blue Cheer's first album, uh, U.S. This is a stereo, unfortunately, Philips. But actually, the stereo sounds pretty good. Actually, I had the headphones on this and. Sounds quite good. So it's got that kind of rainbow Phillips album cover there, or not cover, uh, label. So this was the one that has, uh, what do you call it, that summertime, summertime blues or whatever. So summertime blues, Doctor Please, what else is on here? I think second time around might be a standout track there. But, um, yeah, yeah, and I don't think they go for a ton of money. They're not a dollar bin thing usually, but you can find these. So Blue Cheer has got the nice embossed cover. Yeah, if you like that kind of, um, I, don't, I don't know if that, yes, yeah, it's a little kind of early proto psych, I guess. Uh, it's kind of garagey, more garagey though. Okay, um, here are Willie Nelson. Uh, what do you call it? This is always on my mind. So, so this is the one that has uh, was it Georgia and always on my mind on it. Is that Georgia? 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 Sorry, guys. Let it be me. Oh, bridge over. It's not Georgia. I'm sorry. It's uh, bridge over troubled water. Yeah. Sorry. So this is, I think it's like a second pressing, but uh, the Japanese artwork, yeah, different. Um, I think it's the same photo session, but different artwork on the uh, Japanese version. And this is, I think, the second pressing. So he's got his um, 84 albums on it. I think this originally came out like 82 or 81. But yeah, it's, it's a really solid album. If you see it, I don't think they go for a lot of money. This, yeah, this was like dollar bin in Japan, still in the shrink. So. Yeah, to definitely pick it up if you see it. It's a great one. Uh, next, this is one of the ones I, I really regret not picking up some more of these when I saw them. Sorry, shrink. Okay, but uh, this is uh, one of the Wildflowers uh, comps. Wildflowers 3. I, I saw like three or four of these in the bins. Really regret not picking them up um, at the time because they like this one this is a japanese pressing and not only is it a japanese pressing it is a japanese white label promo pressing and yeah i did not pay very much at all for this one sounds great um see this one's got dave burrell on it um the other michael jackson uh andrews surreal and maono uh randy weston so kind of uh, more of the free jazzy vein, um, I believe with this series, they, it's literally somebody's loft in Manhattan or wherever it is, it just says, yeah, well, wherever, somewhere in New York, they some live recordings uh, of uh, some free jazz artists, that's a great series, I'd definitely be picking up more when I see them. Here's another interesting one I picked up in Japan. This is a UK pressing, but there's also a French version that has alternative uh, artwork on the back. This is uh, Iggy Pop, um, I Got a Right picture disc. Uh, it's kind of interesting. This is it's sort of um, Kill City, but it's not Kill City. So these are uh, some of the alternative uh, songs off of the Kill City session, I believe. Um, 
So it has some of the same songs as Kill City. It has, um, I had a CD back in the 90s, 80s, 90s, um, uh, with full Kill City and some of the um, EPs that he recorded at the same time. And I believe these are the same tracks, but it's not the same track order as Kill City. And I don't think it has all the same tracks, but it definitely has some of the um, additional bonus tracks from that CD. So this is going to interesting find because I don't have the CD anymore. I just I think I dumped it to MP3 or something. I might still have that, but yeah, it's a, it's a fun listen. So it's returned back to his like kind of Stooges style with uh, James Williamson, as I believe. I don't think he even says it on here. No, it does say it. Okay, yeah, James Williamson on here, 1977, licensed from Bomp Records. So yeah, so it's off of that session. But it's uh, it's more or less Kill City, some of the best tracks off Kill City, but it also has some of the best tracks off some of the EPs also from the same sessions. So yeah, if you see these, definitely pick it up. Um, yeah, I regret they had two picture discs. I regret not picking up the second one because this one actually sounds pretty decent. And yeah, Kill City is a favorite of mine. Probably in the minority there. But I also, yeah, I really like that record producer for some reason. I just like that sound. I also did uh, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, which I showed in my other video. Same producer as this guy. Sounds very similar. Very similar mix. Um, yeah, there's another one. Um, some of those albums, like, it was kind of like background music when I was a kid, and I just never paid much attention to it. So this is the one with uh, Running Up the Hill. But really, I think that was the only kind of single off here. Everything else wasn't really remarkable on its own. But as an album, this is a really amazing album. Um, so I would highly recommend picking this up if you find a clean copy. Or I've heard the uh, newer mixes are pretty good, too. Uh, this is one of those albums that, yeah, maybe you want to listen to with headphones. There's a lot of stuff going on in the mix that maybe didn't come across in the radio broadcasts uh, for those of you that were around when this was on the radio all the time so yeah definitely uh look to pick this up um might pick up some more k bush i do need that one with weathering um weathering heights at the very least but yeah i was very impressed by this so i'll definitely get getting some more spins so k bush sounds of love i'm pretty sure there's a newer version i think it's on like pink or purple vinyl or something but the alternative mix done by Kate herself, so I don't know which one's better. Maybe that's a question for Mazzy. But yeah, it's a really nice mix on that. Um, next one. Ah, sorry about that. This is another one I picked up in Pan. Ah, put it in there. Wait, okay. So, relative distance. Uh, really interesting comp uh, from of uh, New England artists. Not a Japanese one. This is from New England, so it's on a small label. Uh, what is it called? Stanton Park. But yeah, I, when I looked up on Discogs, I, basically that label just exists to reproduce um, a lot of uh, underground kind of garagey stuff. So it was all um, side one is mostly uh, more garagey stuff. Uh, side two is starting into that kind of garage psych stuff. Um, Mostly like uh, New England bands that re like released one or uh, two singles at most. Pretty obscure stuff and has a nice little insert explaining uh, the yeah explaining about the, the singles. Has some pictures of the singles on it. Talks about their background um, and yeah. So that these are all done. They ripped them directly from the 45, so you can hear a little bit of the original, yeah, crackle and pop, because, you know, these were very small runs, like, you know, one or two of these are just, they basically go, oh, there's only one copy known in existence. This is the only one, and it was pretty much a test pressing, but it's a classic. It should be famous, yeah, that sort of thing. But yeah, some real amazing stuff. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to find any of these. I'll try to put some of these in the um, description below. Put some links if I can find them. But yeah, there's some really amazing uh, kind of psyche garage stuff on here. But yeah, I, the originals, yeah, you're just not going to find. But if you if you see this comp, it's, it's worth picking up. 
Yeah, I, I probably paid uh, under $10 for it. Do not regret that one at all. Yep, and last one up from side. So this was one of those albums I never really paid much attention to when it came out. Probably because of uh, associations with the kind of people I was into the cure. But uh, giving this a, I picked this up for, I think, 50 cents. A really minty original press. I won't say where, but a little honey hole of mine. It's a double album, not a, not a gatefold. Um, so this is the album. I, I never gave it much attention because it has um, Just Like Heaven on it and uh, Hot Hot Hot. But the funny thing is all the singles off of this I knew were on the third side. So there's a lot of instrumental in here. It's it's actually a really good album. I kind of disappointed I'd never picked this up before. Um, maybe I think I might have borrowed this on cassette or something, maybe from the public library when I was a kid. But yeah, I never really gave it much listen. So '87, The Cure. Uh, cause it kiss, kiss me, ki yeah, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. Yeah, so I was, yeah, I've only given it one proper listen, but it's definitely gonna go back on. Uh, first two sides, especially, really interesting. Um, no real singles off there. All the singles, like I said, well, for side three for some reason, but yeah, four sides. So yeah, cure um, eighties. What? Yes, I'm. Seen other people say this is their favorite Cure album. I always liked their first album, so never really gave us a listen. So yeah, I would recommend giving another try if you if you see it. So the Cure, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. Well, I think that's as far as I'm going to get today. Uh, oh, one more. I did have one more to throw off lately. So this is, uh, yep, Vaseline's. I believe they were Scottish, because this is a Scottish pressing of uh, their first uh, three EPs. It's got a lot of uh, songs people would know, mostly from covers. So, yep, got a star and a spool on it. <laughs> Probably off the artwork from their EPs. Uh, super, super stuff here. Um, yeah, I know Nirvana are big fans. They did some covers of their stuff, like uh, yeah, Son of Gun on here, uh, Molly's Lips, and Jesus Doesn't Want Me for a Sunbeam. All of those, I believe, Nirvana covered. But uh, yeah, excellent, excellent album. The only thing I don't like about this is, they, you know, this is like a early 90s pressing. So basically, this is a CD, and they jammed it on one record. This really needs to be two records. So the, the grooves on this guy are just so close. It skips really easily. Like, I, my turntable doesn't skip. This guy skips. So, yeah. So I might have to increase the tone arm a little bit uh, for the weight on there, but I don't like doing that. But, uh, yeah, um, I'm pretty sure there's this is available in some form or another from Sub Pop. Uh, so that might be a better pressing, because I think that's a double. Disc, uh, but yeah, this one sounds excellent. It's just unfortunately, the grooves are just so close, it uh, easily skips. So, yeah, Vaseline's, um, yeah, you know the song, so yeah, check them out if you haven't. This is super, super, super. Uh, this is gonna, this has been getting uh, multiple uh, listens, and yeah, it's gonna go crash over a friend's place, listen to records. So, this is coming with me. That was in another stack. So anyway, uh, everyone have a good weekend. I might not see you for a couple weeks or so because the uh, wife and kid are in town soon. And I just not going to have time to listen to this stuff. Um, much less make videos. Ugh, got birthdays coming up and Halloween and Thanksgiving, all that fun stuff. So if I don't see you guys for a while, um, happy holidays. <laughs> have a great week. Enjoy your weekend, your week, and so on. Signing out.